had a fantastic start to the year for the 2019 uh, campaign. We went uh, first seven games, we won six out of seven. We were top of the table. Nine games unbeaten. I was like, lads, but the promotion bus, we're up, we're up. We were living the dream. And then all of a sudden, lost a couple of games. and It went downhill from there and couldn't get a win. We were like, just dogging it out. You know, you're a new squad. We probably just needed a bit more time together. And then I remember um, just after the new year, my wife and I, we were watching the news and saw something going off in China and no one kind of knew what was going on. Literally weeks later, we were being told the season's being canceled. Like, what? what? What's happening? The season stopped, 25 games played, and they used an algorithm to hypothesize how many points you would have picked up in the remaining games. At that point, we were sat one position above the relegation zone. Thankfully, we, uh, we managed to survive. Roll on 13 months, nobody kind of anticipated the impact it would have both in sport, in business, in everyday life. It has been a difficult last year with the lack of contact between supporters and the club. We go from playing week in, week out, everything's normal and that, and then to obviously the whole lockdown. There's nobody coming to watch matches. Training wasn't allowed at one stage. All of that's kind of ground to a grinding halt. I think in some way the club has come together a little bit more without the first team being there. It has demonstrated that the club's more than just the first team. It is about the amateur side of the club, mostly Oak. It's about our women's section, mini and juniors. It is a focal point for the community. We've got such a broad outreach with our foundation and some of the work that we can do, whether it's uh, inclusion for walking sports or our heritage program or coaching out in schools or multi-sport camp. You see what impact it plays in a lot of people's lives. It's, it's massive. But being part of that team gives everybody a sense of family more than anything. The idea of the community and its involvement with the club and its interactions with the club, everything hinges on, on that good relationship. The whole idea about setting up the community programme was to sort of regenerate that idea of it being a community club, its roots in its local community. I train at the club Tuesday and Thursday night and then Monday through Friday go into schools, teach years one to six basic skills. Players would earn their, their money for playing rugby by going into schools. It had the benefit for the club of being able to get these players to train harder. It had a benefit in the local community by coaching kids physical activity with sort of semi-professional, professional athletes. We offer tickets to come up at the weekend and they'd like to come and watch us play. Sometimes I do feel a bit of pressure because obviously if you're teaching them passing and you miss a pass, then uh, they're going to get onto you the next day. At the sort of peak of what we were doing, we were coaching over 10,000 kids a year a huge range of programmes. One of those things that we were trying to do was to get those sort of core elements across about respect, discipline, teamwork. We also do multi-sport camp. Whenever the kids are off school, it's really important for them to keep their activity going uh, throughout the break. So we really enjoy having them down. It's not just the kids that benefited. The programme at Mosley probably started the coaching careers of three or four international coaches. They've actually utilised those skills that they learnt at that time to then further their own careers post-playing rugby. Danny was taking rugby into schools, whereas I was doing the educational work with the children. We would work with them after school on their literacy and their numeracy, their self-confidence and a whole range of different things. And parents would come up to the club to collect the children and they'd have a look inside. We had computers and what was then state-of-the-art equipment. And the parents would come in and say, mm, can we have a go? Do you run classes for adults? I actually just said, why don't we just see if we can offer this to the local community who haven't got access to a computer or the internet? So we evolved from working with the children in the evening after school to working with the parents during the day. Billsley is quite high in deprivation in, in the country. We help unemployed people uh, putting CVs together, helping them uh, apply for jobs. Giving them interview practice, a whole range of employability skills. They think, who's going to take me on? What, what have I got to offer? And you can help them to see that they've got something to offer. It's a nice feeling. One of the important points in Mosley's involvement with the community was the introduction 
um, of mini rugby. On a Sunday morning, hundreds of young kids here playing sport and meeting friends, being parts of teams and getting all the good things that go with that. Children from all over the place, many of them continue to play, some administrating, some coaching. I currently coach at Mosley Oak. Uh, before that, I played from under sixes upwards. I was fortunate enough to play a lot of first team rugby here as well. Ollie, I think, would be one of our first ever many and juniors who came all the way and played you know, full-time professional rugby here. I, Ollie, I'd known him since he was a baby, and then a tiny tot. You wouldn't think there was enough muscle on him. It always looked like he was a danger to himself if he played rugby, but... Uh... Any time I wasn't in school, I was at the Reddings. And yeah, I'd, I'd spend hours and hours basically finding people to play cricket with, to kick rugby balls with, football, etc. It was great to see the way he, he developed as a player. He became better and better. 2008-9 and we went to Twickenham and we won the EDF trophy final. I, I remember Ollie dropping the goal all right near the end. It was really very, very cool, coolly taken. Typical Ollie Thomas. Great player, great club man as well. Held various offices within the club from selling programmes and operating gates, scoreboards, ball boying. For somebody to carry on playing there must have been a great level of enjoyment. It's, uh, I've kind of, I, it's pretty much given me everything. Oh, I'm getting a bit upset here, sorry. <laughs> Didn't expect that to happen. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm struggling to put it into words, is what I'm trying to say, is the role it plays in a lot of people's lives, it literally defines them, it's defined me. Yeah, it has defined me. Who, who are the lads who are going to make that next step? And Morgan was one of those lads. Birmingham boy has come through the age groups, come through the sections, came through our education programme. I used to joke when I was here, saying like, I live here. I literally was, I was downstairs uh, learning about a sport diploma, and then I'd wait there until I had training. So I was literally here all the time. Got a lot of talent and uh, it's great to see him now. You know, and that to me shows what the pathway should be. It's, it's made me who I am. I'd love to see another lad come through and do exactly what I've done. I'm not the first and I'm not the last to do it at Mosley, so I can't wait to see who's going to be the next lad to do it as well. I really want to play for Ireland and Mosley. I want to try and play for England. My name is Annie and I play with the under seven. I enjoy the teamwork and the sportsmanship because if one player scores, then all the team goes over and congratulates the player. It helps me learn basic skills, build friendships with other people, and just have a good time. My favourite thing is having fun. More people should like playing much because it's fun to play. It's something I really enjoy, and uh, I love playing it. People come together to try and support Mosley. Everybody enjoys it. I've been at Mosley for six years now. I just needed friends because I came down from Yorkshire and I had nobody. So I joined Mosley and it was the best decision I've ever made. Rugby is so accessible for women of all shapes and sizes. You can be huge, you can be tiny, you'll fit in somewhere. I want to engage the women's team a lot more. Some of the participants in the women's team are, are dynamic and I want to bring that into the club and use that. I'd like to be promoting women's sport more. It would be useful to have more impact within the community with from the women's team, I think, because a lot of it is like rugby scary and it's not. <laughs> We're taking everybody. We've had a couple of players that really haven't fit in at school or something, or they've had issues, or, and they come to Mosley, it's like, why is everybody so nice to me? And it's like, well, you're a nice person. <laughs> you're here for the same reason as us, you just want to be friends with everybody. They had over 50 women training the other way. Oh, that, that's just awesome. I've got so many close friends, like I've got the best friend that I've ever had. She's absolutely brilliant, always there for me. And I don't think you'd get that if we didn't play rugby together because She's my second row and she's always got my back. <laughs> it's all those extra little projects that people in the club are getting a buzz from, so it's creating an energy and a dynamism.
Well, the club was formed in uh, 1873 and uh, it came out of the Havelock Cricket Club. Players at the Cricket Club wanted a, a winter game to play and as there was already an association football club, a soccer club in the vicinity, they decided to adopt the uh, rugby uh, football rules and, and, and formed a Mosley Rugby Club and just about 10 years later moved to the Reading's ground and played there for around about 120 years. Notably from 1965 to 1985, they were arguably for much of that time either the best or one of the best few teams in England. And in 2005, we moved to our new home, to this ground, to Billsley Common. Whilst we've got a history of 150 years, this actual site is still a very young club and we are proud of what we've achieved so far. When we first got here, we had effectively a flat field with a few post cabins next to it. It doesn't look anything like it does now, you know, with this fantastic building. This physical location where the club is now provides a terrific opportunity to help the community. The idea we want here is a community set up for all sports and leisure. The dream would be eventually that the park at Billsley uh, Common would be a really desirable place to come to. The children have got lots to do, play, watch sport, we can play sport and then they can go into the park and walk and see nature. That's what I really hope. We take getting active and being included as a given really, but you know, it's not until that's taken away from you do you actually realise how much you miss it? Clubs like this are absolutely fundamental as we come out of the pandemic. It can have a hugely positive impact, make up for that lost time over the last 18 months. And to make sure that you know, everyone's got that opportunity to be included and to get active and to feel part of something, because that mental health, that physical health is priceless. Everybody is absolutely raring to go. I can't wait for the next, you know, next season to start. People are socialising again. All the things that life's been missing. I'm quite excited to get the buzz back at the club. There's no experience like watching a live game of rugby. Yeah. Actually fans coming to watch, absolutely buzzing. When we come out the other side, I'm back to support and contribute to my club, to Mosley. 150 years ago, people were just working all the time, seven days a week. Then all of a sudden, we weren't working on Saturdays and Sundays, so we had this spare time, and that's when it all started, all sports. So it's not that long ago, really. Whilst there are other more important things in life, sport in itself is a great enabler for people, and to look back and say, I actually played a part in that is a good thing, it's a great thing. People have a perception of rugby, and it's breaking down those barriers really and see the, the benefits that I saw and felt when I first joined Mosley. Get everyone from every background, Muslim, Sikh, Hindu, Christian, black, white, Asian. There's all sorts of women in our team. People work everywhere. We're all equal, welcome, and even if you maybe don't understand the game. You know, I don't understand it sometimes, but... Uh, we all get along because we all just want to be part of something. Birmingham Mosley has an actual sporting organisation is yes, high performance within the top 48 clubs in the country, but ultimately we're underpinned by volunteers, it's underpinned by parents, mums and dads who help out on a Saturday and a Sunday, under sixes, under sevens, all the way through to our education academy, to our cults, to our ladies section, into the first team, Mosley Oak, you know. It really does hit home the importance of that community club. Everybody is a part of this journey. If my dad taught me anything, it was Mosley is your family, your, it's your home, so you have to try and love it as much as you can. We've always got to strive to be better on the field, but we've got to strive to be better off the field as well and leave a legacy, leave a club that's going to be standing here in 100 years, 150 years' time.